Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. Mark Gasol, man, let me give y'all a quick story, man. He is the first person to taught me swing, swing. When you get that thing, Tony Allen... <laughs> Remember, swing, swing. And, every time, <laughs> and so a lot of times, you know, he would get it on his end. He, it'd get time for him to swing, and he'll look to the corner. He'll just shoot it. <laughs> Do you think that he ran out of swing? The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Vince Williams is going to go to All-Star Weekend. Now, what a great thing for him. Kudos to, to Vince Williams Jr. You know, um, he was an injury replacement on the Panini Rising Stars. He'll get a chance to be part of the All-Star Weekend Showcase. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grisby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Tuskegee Morehouse Classic, Mike. It is returning yeah. to Columbus. So I'm glad that it's back in Columbus. My mama stays in Columbus. It's one of her favorite events. When it moved to Birmingham, it just felt like another game, right? Yeah. Birmingham already has the, the uh, Magic City Classic, which is the one that everyone invests in because it's the bigger classic. Get all of your HBCU sports and culture news by tuning in to HBCU Huddle with CJ Hurt and Mike Wallace. New episodes drop every Thursday on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and Spotify. We're going to give you our opinions on the winners and losers of this year's 2024 NBA trade deadline. I've got two winners and a loser. What do you have? For a winner, I'd go with, I think, Boston. I like them getting Xavier Tillman. You got a loser? I have a loser. Who is it? I think all of us. I think all of us lost this because it was kind of just boring. IMHO with Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now we look ahead to Super Bowl 59. Yes, the lines are out for Super Bowl 59. All right. 49ers are the favorite at plus 500. I would not do that. Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs at plus 650. I would take that. Yeah. I'm interested in, in, in the Bears. I need to see what they do with this number one overall pick. The Odds Couple with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, John Roser, and CJ Hurt live Thursdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. That yeah, usually 750 is not gonna drop. You think so? No, you heard it here first. It's is it because it's hideous? It's not gonna drop. That's uh, ugly. Those are no, those those actually actually want that. I like those. I want That's what you want? No, if they drop, those yes. are nice. no, Bottom just, right, that, that was the very first one. That was yeah, the very one first. Yeah, that was the very first yes. one. And they sold out. Fire. And the yeah. box is this big. It's yeah, like a weird boot. No, they're nice. They're nice. No, they're nice. I got really I got the chocolate pair. They're nice. Yeah. The Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Ford Tough Studio at FedEx Forum. It's the Gary Parish Show, presented by Ortho South, on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Gary Parish. All right. I'm here. My name is Gary Parrish speaking to you from FedEx Forum, downtown Memphis. Built for a tough studio. Bennett Doyle producing the program. Glad he's with me. Glad you're with me. Hope you're getting through the day. Best you can. And I hope you listen to Big Bet Bennett when he told you yesterday, take Colorado State over Virginia. 
because Colorado State over Virginia was a blowout. That's a victory for Big Bet Bennett. NCAA tournament is officially underway. We got a big headline last night from Kansas coach Bill Self. Reminded me of some John Calipari press conferences from more than 20 years ago. I'll connect all this stuff in a second. First, though, quickly, let me set today's schedule for you. Mike Wallace going to join me in the next segment, about 20 minutes. I'll talk Grizzlies NBA with him. Mike Wallace from Grind City Media going to be here in the next segment. Finish talking to Mike, take a break, come back, do five more things you need to know, at which point we're going to discuss five previously undiscussed stories. Among them, like I said, Virginia embarrassed itself last night in the first four in Dayton, got blown out by 25 by Colorado State. We'll laugh about the Cavaliers. We'll do that in just a bit. Boise State, Colorado is your first four game tonight. Boise State Broncos, they got a chance to make history. I'll tell you what it is. We'll do that in just a bit. Beyonce has announced that her next album will be called Cowboy Carter. I think I might have inspired this. It's possible I inspired Beyonce's new album. Nope. You know what inspired Beyonce's new album? Good old fashioned racism, it sounds like. We'll talk through that in the third segment. Bryce Harris is a young man, plays basketball for Howard. They were in the first four last night. He had a press conference moment. It went viral. I'll play it for you a little later on in the show. And rest in peace, Penny's Nitty Gritty. We hardly knew ye. Restaurant, no longer. This poor guy, they done took his restaurant. Some people trying to take his job. Better days. We've seen them. We'll talk uh, the demise of Penny's Nitty Gritty. In a segment, we call five more things you need to know. Then we'll eventually do GP's carry out and call it a day. So that's the rundown. We got a lot to get to. But I did want to start with the NCAA tournament because, like I said, we got a big headline last night courtesy of Bill Self. He's your Kansas coach, two time national champion, Naismith Memorial Hall of Famer. He's got a team that was the preseason number one, but just played the Big 12 tournament without its two best players, Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCullough. And then last night, after previously saying he expected Bill Self, he expected both Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCullough to play in the NCAA tournament and be as healthy as they've been lately in the NCAA tournament. He announced last night, Bill Self did, that Hunter Dickinson has been great and is ready to go, but that Kevin McCullough is not only out for the Jayhawks' first game in this NCAA tournament against Sanford, he has been ruled out for the entire NCAA tournament. Here's what Bill Self said last night. Okay. Uh, Hunt looks great. You know, he's practiced basically every day since uh, Saturday, uh, uh, non-contact, and then, and, then, and then the last two days he's been full contact. Kevin's not gonna play. Kevin uh, says his knee pay, pain has not subsided any, and it's too bad for him to be able to contribute. So uh, uh, Kevin will not play. How tough is that to watch a kid that has given so hard and comes back for another year not be able to do so? Yeah. At least for the first round. No, he's out. He's, he, he, we're, we're shutting him down for the tournament. So uh, uh, if we're if we're fortunate enough to win two games, we would have done it without him. And 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 uh, you know he hadn't practiced in six weeks, uh, 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 basically. And so uh, yeah, he he it would he hasn't done more damage to his knee, but but uh, he tried to he tried to do it and said that he just couldn't go. All right. So for people who aren't familiar, Kevin McCullough was on pace to be a first team All American before he got hurt. He's averaging 18.3.6 rebounds, 4.1 assists per game. He has been Kansas's best player. Um, he missed five games in the regular season when this knee issue started popping up. Then he'd come back, play, and then he'd have to sit back down for a little while. Then they decided last week, we're just going to hold him out of the Big 12 tournament. And Bill Self said last week, if we hold him out of the Big 12 tournament, we believe that he will be as healthy – as he's been since before this became a thing. And then last night, Bill Self says he is out for the tournament. And I couldn't help but pick up on the wording. The way he said it, very important. I'm not going to make you watch that question and answer session again. But if you go back and watch it on your own time, what you'll notice is... There's a million different ways coaches talk about things like this. And then there is the way Bill Self talked about it. Do you notice what he said? Kevin says his knee pain has not subsided. 
and it's too bad it, for him to contribute. He tried to go, but he said he couldn't. He says he can't do this. He said he can't do that. And did you see where the reporter tried to set Bill Self up? Yes. How, how, how tough is that for a young man who's given everything he's given and now in the NCAA tournament, he's not, he's not healthy enough to play. How tough is that, at least in the first game? What that reporter was fishing for there was, it's just heartbreaking. This is a young man who's given us everything he had. He transfers to Kansas, and he's on the verge of maybe leading us we don't know where. So to have that just all ripped away and now his college career over just like that, it's just, I mean, it breaks your heart. That's what you're expecting to hear, right? Yes. That's what that reporter was fishing for, right? Do you see what Bill Self said? Oh, no, he's not just out for the first game. He's out. We're shutting him down for the whole tournament. I mean, he, you know, he says he can't go. You know, and if we, you know, if we were to win two games, then we'd be in the Sweet 16. But then we'd have won two games without him. So, like, let's just keep trying to go without him. And, like, you know, by then he will not have practiced for, like, six weeks. Okay, you ready for this? A week ago, it's just a math problem, Bennett. If he ain't practiced for six weeks today, a week ago, you ready? He ain't practiced for five weeks. And you know what you were still saying? We're going to rest him. He's going to be ready to go. Oh, we're going to rest him. and He's going to be ready to go. You know what he's saying now? He says he can't go, so we're just done. It's over. It's over. C college career over. Just rule it out. Some people took what happened last night and interpreted that as, see, Bill Self lied last week because he was trying to secure a seed from the selection committee. You can't come out last week and say Kevin McCullough shut down for the season because then the committee will hold that against you. Maybe you're a five seed instead of a four, perhaps a six instead of a four. So Bill Self lied. You know what I think? I don't think he lied. You know what I saw? I saw a coach who's fed up. Yeah. I saw a coach who does not believe his player really can't play. I saw a coach who believes his player was playing well, started popping up in mock drafts, got a little bit of a knee injury, and has advisors who are now telling that player, you need to shut it down and be ready for the pre-draft stuff. Because we've seen a million of those press conferences. I'm sick for the kid. You know, he it's didn't the say NCAA anything tournament. like that. Right. Nothing like that. Right. I'm sick for Kevin. He's done everything he could right. possibly do. I've never seen somebody work harder. Nothing. He's been in the training room seven hours a day. None of that. It was just, he says he can't play. Right. He says it hurts too much. <laughs> you know what it reminded me of? You might be too young to remember this. 2002 Memphis team. John Calipari's second team. It had Dewan Wagner on it. Oh, yeah. It had um, Earl Barron, mm -hmm. Antonio Burke. Is this the NIT championship team? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Three future NBA players yep. on it. In Dewan Wagner, Earl Barron, Antonio Burks. And that doesn't even count Chris Massey, who was awesome college player. Yep. Scooter McFadden, who went on to be all SEC at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony Rice, who was a great college player at Memphis, or at least a really good one. Um, and they also had a fellow named Kelly Wise, who was arguably their second best good player. Lord. How did that team not win a national championship? <laughs> That's insane. It's an insane team. That is a loaded college basketball Like, if you just took team. that team right now Good and said, Lord. where would that team rank in college basketball right now? Number one in the country. Three future <laughs> NBA players, plus Chris Massey, Kelly Wise, Scooter McFadden, Anthony Rice. Oh, man. That team would be maybe, it'd be one of the most talented teams in the country. Okay? Yes. They were preseason 12th in the AP poll. All right? They started the season 20-4. and four. Cruising. Then Kelly Wise gets a little injury. Mm -hmm. They went two and five in their final seven games before Selection Sunday and missed the NCAA tournament. They went from 20 and four to out of the NCAA tournament, from 12th in the country to out of the NCAA tournament. It's not a lot different than what happened with this team. Mm -hmm. And the thing I remember most about that, you can go look it up if you really got some time on your hands, is that every time you would ask John Calipari about Kelly Wise, because remember, he missed, they went two and five in the stretch. He missed multiple weeks of games. And every, so it was a constant thing. Is Kelly Wise going to play? And every time you asked John about it, he would say, he says he can't go. He would never say, oh, Kelly's hurt. Can't play. Kelly is just, he's too banged up. Oh, Kelly, it's too much pain. He can't play through that. Oh, it's a process. He's not. Every time you'd ask John Calipari about Kelly Wise, you know what he'd say that year? Every time. He says he, says he can't play. You know? He says he can't play. 
It was never he can't play. It was always he says he can't play. Sounded exactly like Bill Self. Mm -hmm. And from being around that team, you know what I knew about that Memphis team? Mm. You know what they actually thought? What? And they can deny this 20 years later if they want to. You know what they actually thought? What? He's a little B. Damn. The doctors have cleared him. He could play. Dang. Well, he says he can't. He says he's hurt. Hey, he says he's hurt. I liked Kelly Wise. You know what they? You know what they'd say behind him, behind his back? Huh. He's a little B. He says he's hurt. He says he can't play, so we'll just play without him. And then they went to the NIT. But that's what I remember about mm-hmm. the end of that regular season. I remember season. that. Is Kelly Wise going to play this weekend? I mean, listen, he's cleared to play from the training staff, but he says he says he says he can't play. Mm-hmm. So he can't play. You know, it is what it is. Every time, short answer. It was never like, man, this breaks my heart for Kelly. He had a chance to maybe win a national championship, and now this thing is just bothering him, and it's really messed up our team. But more than anything, it's ruined the end of his Memphis career. None of, none of that ever. It was just like, he says he can't play, so I guess he can't play. You know, He says he can't. Says he's too hurt, so I guess he's too hurt. Sounded exactly like Bill South. I don't know that Bill will ever say it. I don't know that anybody on that Kansas staff will ever say it. I promise you they do not believe that Kevin McCullough is too hurt to play. They believe he clocked out on this, clocked out on this. And so now if you need to adjust your brackets, like you might ought to, Kansas is playing Sanford in the first round. Kansas already had depth issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're basically a five-player team. You take out Kevin McCuller, they're like a four-player team, depending on what you think of Nick Timberlake. Sanford plays at a top five pace in the country. They're going to come out. It's just running up and down the court, pressing and shooting threes, right? We really going to take Sanford over over Kansas? I, I know some people will. I won't. I'm just going to trust Bill Self. I'm just going to trust Bill Self to win a game. But in the second round, it would probably be, not definitely be, but probably be Gonzaga. I'll take Gonzaga. Yeah, good night. Yeah. Yeah. I just, we've seen what Kansas looks like when they're missing either Hunter Dickinson or Kevin McCuller. And it's not good. It's not good. It's good enough to maybe get past Sanford. I don't know that it's good enough to, to get to the Sweet 16. But we'll see. Mike Wallace is up next. We're going dancing. Welcome to Fandom 101. We need you going crazy in the stands. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA Division I men's basketball first and second rounds this March in Memphis, Tennessee. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash MVB tickets. Class dismissed. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic, you know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. Real country music with Cody Johnson live Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum. Country's best, the Leather Tour with Cody Johnson with special guest Justin Moore, also featuring Drake Milligan. VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office. Cody Johnson. Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. Looking for the hot hand. Jaron got the step, Woo! got the flush. There's no layups on that one. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Number two.
Welcome back, Gary Parish Show, presented by Ortho South. We're in the Built Ford Tough Studio. We'll get back to college basketball in a second, but right now, Grizzlies Warriors tonight out in San Francisco. It's a nine o'clock tip. You can watch it on ESPN inside Chase Center. It's going to be our colleague, Grind City Media, Mike Wallace, who joins me now live from looks like a spacious hotel room. That looks like a nice hotel room, Mike. Yeah, I, I lucked up. I lucked up. Sometimes you get the luck of the draw, man, when they hand you your hotel key. And uh, I ended up with a corner suite, you know, c- kind of room. So I'm not complaining at all. Dig hey, first of, all, first of all, man, we don't have to switch out of the college basketball talk. Let's start off by giving a shout out to my Grambling State University Tigers. Okay. Who will be in action today in their first ever NCAA tournament game. It's the first four in game. But Grambling State University, man, my alma mater, man, I, I, my team could never get there. <laughs> in the year where I was there, uh, a year where I, w- I was with the team. But at the end of the day, man, it's, it's great to have them and see them in, uh, in action. Okay, I'm glad you brought this up because yeah. um, one of the things, I was talking through this with somebody else, and I said, listen, the first four, it, it is what it is, but it, it feels the same every year in the sense that the 16s kind of, like, we don't even really pay attention. And then you get the at-large teams, and no matter what happens in the game between the at-large teams, we never celebrate the winner. We just point to the loser and say, see, they shouldn't have been here to begin with. That's what we did with Virginia last night. Mm-hmm. Circling back to the 16s largely get ignored. I do think that's true, but that is your alma mater. Tell me yeah. what that means to you to watch Grambling play tonight on national television in the NCAA tournament? It, it, it means a lot to me because when I was there, we were always a football in a band school. Basketball was never really anything that was, you know, that was serious. We weren't competitive uh, at all. You know, I mean, it was okay, relatively speaking. Um, you know, Willis Reed is, is the uh, uh, program's greatest ever basketball player. And we know Willis Reed went on to the Knicks, won a championship there, Hall of Famer, great ambassador. Um, but other than that, man, it was just about football and, and, and the band. But to see Gramlin, uh, you know, build a new facility, to see them grow the program, to see them get the right coach um, and, and guide this thing, it means a lot. So for a day, hey, listen, we're probably going to take an L, but it's Montana State in a 16 versus 16 to see who plays Purdue. Um, so you take your chances there. But at the end of the day, man, it's just fun to see your team and your alma mater always involved in something like that. OK, I think this is an important conversation because, as you know, Greg Sankey, among others, Mm -hmm. are considering expanding the NCAA tournament and not just so they can get more Montana States and Gramblings in. It is so they can get more SEC and Big Ten teams in. And there's at least a a hint that perhaps they would limit automatic bid access to a certain number of leagues. In other words, there is a scenario where your alma mater from that Mm -hmm. league wouldn't necessarily be granted an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament just by winning a conference tournament. And the argument for that would be, I promise you this is what Greg Sankey would tell you off the record, hey, it's nice that we can uh, put these small schools from these small leagues in the tournament, I guess, but they add no value. They're not actually going anywhere. They're not actually championship contenders. The only reason we keep them in is because we've always had them in, but in this world, in life, things change, and it's time for this thing to change. How much would that bother you Because everything that Greg Sankey would theoretically say there would technically be true, but still you are ripping away at the fabric of something when you start limiting access to this event that has always been inclusive. What I I would say to Greg Sankey, and and I go way back with Greg Sankey, man. I remember covering him when he was the commissioner of the old Southland Conference uh, way back in the day before he got to the SEC. And, you know, it's one of those things where I would say, listen, all you got to do is look at the last two years where you had this partnership between the Southwestern Athletic Conference HBCU conference, historically black colleges and university conference, and the Pac-12. And what did the SWAC do? They went out to the Pac-12 schools and won two or three games in those matchups. You know, UCLA took a loss. Um, you know, Gramlin beat a team last year. You look at this year, um, Jackson State, and, and not, not only Jackson State, but also uh, Southern went to Mississippi State and beat Mississippi State. Mississippi State is in the tournament this year. So there are opportunities and chances, man. I remember when I was at Gramlin, the greatest player in our conference that at that time was Lindsey Hunter yeah. and what kind of run they went on with Jackson State. They didn't get to the NCAA tournament, but they made a run in the NIT at that time when the NIT was a much stronger field. So, you know, it just it, it's a one and done. That's what this this opportunity is all about, man. Giving schools that get overlooked a chance. I remember Hampton beating number two ranked Iowa State, you know, uh, years ago. You know what I mean? When Coach Steve Murphy led those guys and they beat Marcus Pfizer's Iowa State team. So it can happen, man. Just give it a chance to happen. 
I'm talking to Mike Wallace, Grind City Media. Let's turn our attention to the NBA. You're in San yeah. Francisco. Grizzlies Warriors tonight, 9 o'clock ESPN. Um, Desmond Bain has been back now for two games. What have you seen from Des since his return? Man, it, it seems like Des just got back in the way he left. You know what I mean? He's playing, you know, uh, uh, he's averaging 35 minutes, right, right off the bat. And, you know, I have a piece up on Grind City Media right now talking about how the last thing you want to put on Desmond Bain and the last thing he's going to accept is a minutes restriction just because of the way that he plays. He's fine. The foot is fine. Um, he's getting his rhythm back. And he, the, the Grizzlies are passing the ball a lot better. They had 34 assists Saturday night against Oklahoma City, which was a season high. They pushed, uh, you know, Sacramento to overtime and just ran out of gas with only eight bodies available. Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson led the way. But you also saw Gigi Jackson and Jake LaRavia play 40-plus minutes in that game. So what Desmond is doing is infusing a sense of confidence, a sense of uh, moving the ball, sharing the ball, and he's giving them a, a downhill guy that can attack at the end of the shot clock. So all of those things are what Desmond Bain brings to the table. One of the things Bennett and I discussed yesterday was after the Monday night loss in Sacramento, overtime game, um, even in – it's a season headed toward the lottery. It's a season not headed toward a game 83. Everybody understands that. And yet when you looked on the court, it was clear Desmond Bain – was working to try to win that game. Jaron Jackson Jr. wanted to win that game. John ja Morant was engaged on the sideline. Marcus Smart was going hard at the officials, uh -huh. engaged on the sideline. Um, it, it makes it in, – in, in that exact moment Bennett was tweeting, I, I'm irrationally invested in this Grizzlies game. I do think <laughs> – <laughs> Listen, we're, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I, I can't wait for next season. I've already reached that point. Um, but it does make it easier to get through the rest of this season when you are watching your favorite basketball team. And it, it, at least in that moment, you're like, hey, they, those guys are still working. Those guys still care. They're still trying. It's just you look around the NBA, and I promise you every bad team or team with a lot of losses on Monday night – it didn't put forth that kind of effort. I just thought it was in, an interesting thing to, to witness um, as the, the dog days of this thing have set in. They, they were still working hard as recently as Wednesday night. Yeah, I mean, when you have professionals on the floor with something to play for, something to prove, I mean, you talk about Desmond Bain. We just talked about him wanting to come back and, and get himself acclimated with the new rotation uh, that's playing now than the one when he left. I mean, think about it. G.G. Jackson wasn't in the rotation when Dez got hurt, you know, um, uh, Trey Jemison wasn't out there in the rotation. Jake LaRavia certainly wasn't in the rotation at that point. So he's coming back trying to get acclimated with guys that are going to be part of this team as they move forward next year. Jaron Jackson Jr. wants to have a durable season. You know, there's things that he, he you know, he's dealing with nick and knack injuries and, you know, the pains and those kind of things, but he's pushing through some of that stuff so he can get to whatever it is, 65, 68, 70 games possibly uh, before this thing is over with. And then obviously the young guys. I mean, we saw G.G. Jackson emerge. We saw him as a rotation player, and now these last five games, we're seeing him as a starter. Now you got to scratch your head and say, you know what? If all things are even, and it's an open competition at that three spot going into next year, does Gigi Jackson deserve an opportunity? And his play right now is suggesting it does. He's not going out there against second and third teamers. He's going out there against Shea Gilgis Alexander, against you know uh, De'Aaron Fox and those guys. And then tonight, he's going to have a matchup with Steph Curry and some of the Warriors frontline guys. So. These are valuable moments, and that's why these games are intriguing when they're close. Do you think anything that's happened with Gigi and or Vince impacts mm -hmm. what the Grizzlies might decide to do with Marcus Smart this offseason? Or is Marcus Smart going to be a part of this team next season and nothing that happens with Gigi or Vince plays any role in that? I, I, I would I would lean more towards the latter. Now, obviously, as we get closer to the draft and you see what kind of deals come about, Zach is going to be Zach Kleiman, the Grizzlies president and GM, uh, is going to be heavily involved as he always is around the draft. Um, you know, that's how they sort of put position themselves to get Marcus last year. And if a deal is out there, he's going to op you know open his eyes and look at it. Um, but I would think that uh, Marcus Smart will be a part of this team next year. I think they like what he brings just from a mentality and also a leadership and also what he can bring on the floor. Um, but what, what, what his role will be, you know, is he going to be willing to come off the bench? Is he going to force his way to say, hey, I'm a starter or bust? That remains to be discussed. But, you know, this team, now that we see these young guys that you mentioned emerge, there are a lot of different ways you can shuffle the top six, seven, eight players in this rotation.
to do what's best for the Grizzlies, not necessarily what's best for any individual player. And we'll see where it goes from there. Before I get you out of here, we talk about the Grizzlies all the time. So let me ask you about the Warriors. Um, they are sitting here 35 and 32. They're two, one and two in their past three games. Draymond mm -hmm. Green recently um, said that, listen, he understands this season, you know, they're not at the top of the Western Conference standings and they've lost nearly as much as they've won. But Draymond Green more or less said, if we're healthy and we're in a seven-game series, you know, I don't think there's anybody we can't beat. So their confidence remains high, at least publicly, um, even if the results are nowhere near what they used to be. Do you have any confidence that this version of Golden State can even compete for a championship again before they they have to maybe not blow it up, but but certainly alter the the main core? I'm not convinced that this version that we're seeing this year can do it. They're not as strong defensively. Um, you know, their rotations are kind of hit and miss. Guys, the continuity just isn't there. We're seeing the names on the jersey. Steph Curry is every bit as productive as he's ever been. But that's not the case after Steph Curry. You know what I mean? We haven't seen, you know, Wiggins, you know, do what Wiggins did two years ago when they were on the way to the finals and winning that championship. We haven't seen some of the younger emerging guys uh, provide that consistency. You know, even though Kaminga has had a breakout year, um, I don't know if that's reliable in, in, in terms of winning. And they certainly, I think defense has been their biggest uh, downfall. The teams that were great for the Warriors had that, you know, that death not lineup. And that was all defensive driven, transition driven. This team isn't playing that same way. They look, you know, the names and the jerseys and the faces look familiar. But these Warriors, they'll be competitive. I wouldn't want to play them in a in a, in a play-in scenario because I think a one-game scenario, they're much stronger. But I just think a seven-game series, they will eventually get overwhelmed by a, a, a team that's going to be seated higher than them. It'll be Grizzly Warriors tonight, 9 o'clock inside the Chase Center. Mike Wallace will be there. You can read all about it, see everything he's doing, grindcitymedia.com. Good luck tonight in the first four. Enjoy that 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 hotel room. That's a nice one. You can maybe do some laps in there. I am, man. Absolutely, man. I appreciate it. You travel safe too, man, because I know it gets really, really busy for you too. It does. I'll be fine. I appreciate you. Thanks, buddy. That's Mike right, Wallace, that. Grind City Media. Bennett, you know, as uh, I go back and forth to New York, you, um, you, you, a few weeks ago, I can't remember where I was, maybe Fort Lauderdale or somewhere in Florida. Yep. And, uh, I just checked into my room, just a normal room, and I walked in, and I was like, man, this is the biggest. It, you, you get so used to smaller rooms in New York. Everything's small in New York. Everything is just tiny. Mm. You walk in, and you go, yep. this is just like the hotel room's about like about like this room here. Yeah, Everything, yeah. Everything's small. So when you see something like that, Mike Wallace, that's a nice hotel ride. I'm envious. He stays flexing during this segment. Every every week, he, he, every week, something even more impressive than the last. Dude, that hotel's bigger than my house. Hotel's bigger than that. Probably never lose electricity. <laughs> no, never. All right? Never. All right? Um, he joined us from a yacht several weeks ago. Uh-huh. And here's the other thing. Tell me if you notice this as well. Mm. Just always looks good. Yeah. Just looks. Mike's on point. Like he has a good presence about it. Mike's on point. Like I don't have a good presence about me. I don't either. I look like a penis. <laughs> I look like shit. I mean, yeah. I, look, I look like a penis. <laughs> Mike's on point. I look like, you know, <laughs> look at me. I either look like a penis or like a boulder maker. Damn. I'm either a penis. No, you're a boiler maker. Or a boiler maker. We got to get you the hat. What do you think I am? What do I look more like? You're a boiler maker. This is me being a penis. Uh huh. And this is me being a boiler maker. What do you think I'm more? I think you look like a boiler maker. Yeah, I think you look like a boiler maker. Some would say. What is a boiler maker, by the way? He is a person who makes boilers. No. Yeah, he makes boilers. No. Yeah, of course. No, I think it has something to do with like coal or you, something like that. You just make boilers. It's like, hey, what do you do? <laughs> I make boilers. Okay, good for you then. Good I want to say it's a coal related thing. I don't, I don't think. Look, look at me though. You know. I think you look cool, Mike. What's Wallace? that shirt you got on? That's a sick shirt. Double deuce. New Roadhouse is coming out. Hey, he can't compete with your T-shirt game though. I'll give him. I, I'll give you that. No, it's all Grizzlies. Yeah, yeah. He's Mike, Mike just is always rocking the, the team he's, store. He's, gear. Yeah, yeah, he's always yeah, he's, yeah. he's team store like you. Yeah. Look at you now. You're rocking your Orioles stuff. Oh, oh. By the way, the Major League Baseball season started. Best in the, team in baseball, baby. Major League Baseball season started in the middle of the night in Korea. Isn't this dumb? Do you realize like that. the 2024 Major League Baseball season is underway right now? Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was actually ended up being on like this morning around like you know eight o'clock. Yeah. Still. It was still it was still going on. Ain't but. nobody got time for that. 
Yeah, I don't know about all that. Why are we launching baseball season right in the middle of the first couple of days of the NCAA tournament? Like, what are we doing? I mean, I think it's more of trying to get keep the international audience growing, but then just go do spring training overseas. You uh, know, uh, it's not, there got to be a better way. Yeah. And, and like, listen, they're chasing money. I understand. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. They're doing every, they're doing what everybody else does, but. uh I'm old enough to remember when opening day meant something, Bennett. I agree. And today is technically opening mm-hmm. day, and it doesn't feel like it means anything. Yep. It We're always like, trying to change stuff. That Mike Wallace looks good on camera. That's yeah, what I'm does. trying to tell you. Yeah, he does. He just always looks good. Yeah. And it's like he's it like it's like he's got the best sound and mm-hmm. he's got the best camera. Mm-hmm. Just really impressed by that guy. I am too. I am too. I like Mike Wallace. I like Mike too. Got a nice presence about him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We cut co- hey. You know who doesn't have a nice presence about him? Mm. Virginia. Dude. They stink. That like I mean, I didn't know what to do last night. I was just like, well, shit, like I'm I'm bored now. <laughs> I mean, well, you just got you just got <laughs> I, I was going to lock in last night, enjoy the first four, get ready for the tournament. Nope, you got to try you, <laughs> we were all reduced to just trying to think of Virginia jokes. Yep. It was just like, hey, anybody got another Virginia joke? Yikes. What a disaster that was. And this is one I typically say things like nothing that happens after Selection Sunday proves anything that happened on Selection Sunday was right or wrong. In other Mm -hmm. words, you'll see this sometimes like a six seed will end up in the final four and somebody will say, see, they were underseeded. Well, not necessarily. They were probably properly seeded. And then, uh, you know, they got hot. And they got a you know lucky bounce here, and that's how they end up in the final four. But just because they end up in the final four as a six seed, it doesn't mean that they were under seeded. It just means that sometimes things like this happen in a single elimination tournament. Yeah. But what happened last night is absolutely an indictment of the selection committee because we all told you on Sunday this team does not belong in the NCAA tournament. They don't belong in the NCAA tournament. We said it on Sunday. We said it on Monday, and then Tuesday night they got in the NCAA tournament. And they embarrassed themselves. That was an embarrassing performance. I'll give you some numbers on it next. Gary Parrish Show presented by Ortho South. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 crispy tender wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC. Tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included. Limit time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Today, we have two very special guests on our program, introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip? Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com.
Orthopedic injuries can be unpredictable, unforeseen, and unscheduled. And Ortho South understands this better than anyone. Since your injuries don't make appointments, you don't need to either. That's because Ortho South welcomes walk-ins during the weekdays and the evenings, and even on Saturdays. So next time an unforeseen injury makes an unscheduled appearance in your life, visit orthosouth.org to find your nearest urgent care location. Just walk in, and Ortho South will take care of everything, especially you. Learn more at orthosouth.org. That's orthosouth at orthosouth.org. Now I got five more things you need to know. Number one. The chat's saying that the the pullover story needs to be in here. I didn't put it in here. It's not the, It's not even a great story. Uh, yeah, I thought we might open on it. Nah. I mean, I can give you the brief version if you want it. And I appreciate everybody's patience. Mm-hmm. They're what doing, happened? Well, first off, they're doing... Oh, let's talk about it. Well, I'm ready. First off, they're doing... Constri- Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What is going on all over the city right now? I don't know, Bennett. I don't know. But I'm, I'm barely here anymore. <laughs> right. You don't know. So I don't know. You just experienced it today. So I don't even know what's going <laughs> right. on. Right. But apparently they're doing construction work on 55 North in DeSoto County, somewhere around Church Road. Mm-hmm. Okay? So I hit that traffic first. And I'm like, I knew I was in trouble yep. the second I got in my car because my, na- <clears throat> my car has got a navigation system in it. Yeah, and it's got your ETA, right. And it knows where I'm going. Yep. My car somehow knows where I'm going all the time. I think it actually picks up on my driving habits. So, like, if I get in a car, if I get into my car at the time – I normally would take my little guy to baseball practice. It'll automatically start navigation yeah. toward his baseball practice because it knows that's probably where I'm going. Mm-hmm. My car knows where I'm going. Yep. First, let's stop here for a second. Is it crazy that your car knows where you're going before you do sometimes? A little bit, but I, I've accepted I've all accepted that. I've accepted all yeah, that too. Yeah. I've accepted I, all that. The too. robots know where I am at yeah. all times. Yeah. They yeah. know everything I do. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I love yeah. I love the people who are all worried about. Uh, protecting their privacy. Um, you, you can't. Oh, buddy, it's <laughs> <laughs> that's that's way well over with. So if if somebody wants to know everything about you, they can whenever they want to. All right. Yep. That's over. Um. So I knew I was in, I knew I was in trouble. I got into my car at nine oh nine. Okay, that's plenty of time. And and you know what my navigation said? Ten oh six. I said, oh, buddy. Yep. It 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 should not take that long to get to work mm-hmm. oh buddy and then i ran into the traffic on the interstate i said okay i gotta get off here yep so i get off the interstate off at church road i'm booking it up highway 51 mm-hmm. this ain't the way you should be driving i go all the way to state line get back on the interstate i'm cruising yep. more traffic got to get off on like norris road or something like that now i'm in the back streets of memphis buddy i'm really in it i'm in it now mm-hmm. these ain't i'm in it mm-hmm I'm still fine. I texted you. I said, hey, it looks like going to be maybe 10.02, 10.03. Yep. That's what we were headed for. It's going to be – I'm having to really take a wild ride to get here today. But it's going to be fine. Mm. And Bennett, I tell you, I want more than about a about a six iron from FedEx Forum. Blue lights. Yeah. Blue lights. And then, you know, I do what you're supposed to do. when you, I wasn't going to try to have a high-speed chase on a Wednesday morning. I get that. I, I, you know, I wasn't up for it. Pull me over. He said, you got a license? I said, of course I got a license. I handed it to him. He wasn't much of a chatter, my, my officer. Oh, you didn't stand a chance. He didn't have nothing you to say. You didn't stand a chance. He didn't have nothing to say. He didn't even care why I was speeding. Mm-hmm. He, sometimes they'll ask you. Why are you speeding, sir? You in a hurry, sir? Yep. <clears throat> no, this, he yep. didn't care. He just yep. said, you got a license? I said, of course I do. And I did everything I'm supposed to do. I put my hands on the wheel to, you know, to, to decrease. Yep. To decrease any anxiety with, with with that might come along with a routine traffic stop. I think you're okay. I put I yep. put I put my hands on the wheel. I wanted the officer to see my hands clearly, you know, so he don't think I'm in, he don't think I'm into any funny business, you know. So I put my hands on the wheel, and my guy walked up. He said, uh, "You got a license?" I said, "Of course I do." He, I handed it to him. Mm. He said, "I'll be right back." I said, "Well, keep it, keep, get going, make it quick." Yeah, I got a show yeah, to do. Yeah. I got a show to do. No, I didn't say anything. I just, I didn't say, I literally said nothing. And then he brought me back my, uh, he brought me back. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Looks like a Kroger receipt. When do they start yeah. doing these? No, they're like that now. When do they start doing that? Yeah, they're like that now. I, when I got in a wreck the other day, they printed it out. It's a big one like that. 53 and a 35, Bennett. Yep. I'm out there. I'm out th- what are we going to do? I probably went like five, six years without getting a single ticket. Mm. Swear to God. I got an electric vehicle. I can't stop getting tickets. Can't now. start getting tickets. 
Dude, I don't know. I just want to go fast. And I, mean, I don't, I, it's, you know what it is? I don't even want to go fast. I genuinely have no idea how fast I'm going. These electric cars, but they're going to be the death of all of us. Yep. These electric cars, you look up and you're going 117. You don't even know you're going 117. Right. It's wild. So here's the problem. They, there's all kinds of construction going on all over the place right now, all over the city streets. Poplar. Anyways, dude, it takes me now. I, I live out and my kids go to daycare out in East Memphis. I live out in East Memphis. Okay. So what? That's like 20 minutes from downtown. You would think, mm -hmm. dude, it takes me over an hour every day now to leave here, get my kids from daycare and get back home. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if I go to the interstate, if I go down union, Peabody, whatever it is bad right now i don't know what it is yeah. but the congestion right now in memphis is like different than it has been in a long long time and then on top of that that's the other problem is like they got you know there's a lot of these speed traps on the interstate now like and, and you got pulled over but yours wasn't a highway set yours was a oh i was memphis like i mean park. i was just right out there i mean i was like pulling yeah. in almost pulling in well they got the the, the Tennessee Highway Patrol out on the interstate, yeah. and they're pulling people over like like on the side of the interstate. Problem with that is, you pull people over on the side of the interstate during the middle of the day during rush hour. Well, it slows down the traffic, traffic even right. more. Yeah, so it, it's a lot going it's on a out tough there. Tough cycle right now. Yeah, what should have been a normal like twenty four minute drive for me was an hour. Was yeah, it, was an was an hour plus a ticket. It's been a hell of a Wednesday, Bennett. Yeah, I bet. But you know what? I'm blessed. Good. I'm blessed too. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Yep. Hey, Bennett, look at me. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I, I don't, I'm not, but I understand the sentiment. I actually think I am too blessed to be stressed. I probably should be, but I, I let that stress come in. Me every too. Day. I don't yeah. feel that way. Right. <laughs> but I think I am that I way. I welcome that stress daily. I think I'm too blessed to be stressed. Mm -hmm. If I'm being honest, I think I'm too blessed to be yeah, stressed. Me too. Me too. But I don't feel that way. No, no. But I think if I take a step back, we just got to keep saying that in our heads. Yeah, if I take a step back and I look around, I go, man, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Like when that when that cop pulls you over and you're just like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. You just, you just say, to you, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Well, like when the cop pulled me over, like here's what actually went through my head. Uh -huh. I went, man, I was right there. I almost made it. I almost made it. Like I almost got here, dude. You should have just pulled into the lot. It's we've got a uh, we've got the uh, the lever, the pull down thing. That he wouldn't have been able to get through that. That's he all, didn't have a key card. That's he all, could have just pulled right in, shut the door behind him. That's all I needed was to get a, 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 a evading arrest charge <laughs> <laughs> on the second day of the first four. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's a good way to end up that's on tough. whatever website covers stuff like that. Here I am on awfulannouncing.com. dot com. Mm -hmm. The backup time sh time to shine guy for CBS Sports Network yeah. just tr went on a high, high speed, speed chase yeah, inside the FedEx Forum <laughs> parking garage. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't have worked out. Good. I just decided to take my fifty three mile per hour ticket and get on with it. I ain't mad at nobody. That guy was just doing his job. That's right. I wish he'd have been like, uh, "Sorry, I have to do this" or anything. He didn't. He didn't want to talk. You know what? It's fine. He didn't want to talk. You know what I would? Sometimes I don't want to talk either, so it's fine. I don't blame him. I must say, if, if I get pulled over, my first thing, my first thing is going to be, have you seen the interstates? Yeah. Have you seen these interstates lately? Well, the last time. Of course I'm speeding. I'm late to everything. Well, the last time I got a ticket, the cop was like, the officer. Is cop a derogatory term? Cop? I don't even, is it? No? no. Cop's fine? Cop's okay. fine. Okay. We Law had a show called Cops. I know. I just, I don't know anymore, Bennett. I don't know what you can say and I can't say anymore. You just say officer when you're trying to like get out of a ticket. Okay. So the <laughs> yeah, officer. <laughs> Uh, the last time the officer was like, why are you in a hurry? Or, or he was like, are you in a hurry? He wanted to talk a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, you're not going to believe this officer. I'm actually not in a hurry. I was just playing around with my phone. I'm about to admit to a bunch of stuff I'm not, I shouldn't admit to. Mm -hmm. But officer, between us, if I'm being honest, I was just looking for a podcast on my phone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm on the interstate. And uh, I have this electric vehicle now, and it goes fast. You can't really feel it. And I had no idea I was going this fast. That's mm -hmm. the truth. Yep. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not running behind. I just didn't realize how fast it was going. And he was like, okay, here's a ticket. He didn't care. This officer, he didn't even – he didn't say nothing. He didn't mm -hmm. want to know why. But I was actually in a – I was speeding. The first time I was speeding just because I'd lost track of speed. This time I was speeding because I was actually in a hurry mm -hmm. because of the, the traffic all over the greater Memphis area. But this officer had no interest in whether I, I was in a hurry or not or whether I had a show that started at 10 or not or whether I was dying or not, yeah. how my day's going, what I think of the weather. He didn't have nothing to say. 
Yeah. But that's fine. I don't hold that against him. Today I'm going to get on a plane. And you know what? There's a good chance I ain't going to have nothing to say to anybody either. And that won't mean I'm being rude as much as it'll be like sometimes you just don't have something to say. Right. Isn't that all right? That's all right. Isn't that all right? My wife gets on to me about this all the time. She thinks I don't speak enough in social settings. Mm-hmm. And I say, well, sometimes I just don't feel like I have anything to say. Do I have to say something every time? Do I have to say something every time? Uh, there was a situation last night, and uh, we were just around a group of people, and my wife was like, uh, well, I wish you would have said a little more than what you said. And I said, well, I didn't have anything to say. I didn't know what to say. There's just a lot of pressure on me to talk all the time. And sometimes I just don't have stuff to say. See, so I'm so I'm not going to turn around and hold this officer responsible for not talking. I know what that man feels like. Yeah. See, I'm the opposite. Like anytime I go anywhere, like I, when I leave and I'm leaving, going home for the night, I think, did I talk enough? Oh no, I always have this feeling like, did I come across as rude? Yeah. I always I do have that a lot. Like, did I come across as rude? But i have never being rude, or not. I'm not intending to mm. be. I just genuinely don't feel like I have anything to contribute. I get that. I like. I don't feel like it's my responsibility to walk into a room and and say, "What's up, everybody? I'm here. Mm-hmm. How's everybody doing?" And I feel like sometimes that's what's expected of me. I think it is. Well, I don't feel. You're a public figure, dude. I think you have to. I think you have to force it a little bit in these public settings. I do. I'm I, with Kelly on this. I, I think you got to force it a little bit more. I've actually had to ask my wife in the most polite way possible. Uh huh. Please stop putting pressure on me to talk to people. <laughs> I, I said that to her. I think it's a responsibility. Because when she walks into a room, she addresses everybody. Uh-huh. Eye to eye, name. Like, she wants to everybody to feel great. Yep. And I just want to not bother anybody. Yeah. So we have incredibly different approaches to these things. And she's constantly like, go say hello to so-and-so. Yep. You need to say hello to so-and-so. And I have actually looked at her and said... You're putting an incredible amount of pressure on me mm-hmm. right now. Just please, just let me stand here for a second. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't feel comfortable. And I know this is all internal madness. I understand that. But I'm not going to get mad at that officer for not wanting to talk to me because yeah. there's a good chance I wouldn't want to talk to him later on today. You right, know? right. Everything's fine. I'm too blessed to be stressed. That's it. That's I, what they say. I don't always feel it, Bennett. But I know it to be true. Whew. I know it to be true. Even if I don't always feel it, I know it to be true. Hit story number one. I thought I did. Hang on. Number one. Virginia embarrassed itself last night in the first four. You called it. I want to give you credit. Credit where credit's due. You called this. Yep. Colorado State beat Virginia by 25 points in the first four. And this is a Virginia team that most bracketologists were saying on Sunday does not belong in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. And the committee still put them in. And then they went out last night. And lose 67 to 42. They scored 14 points in the first half. They only had 14 points still with 16 minutes and 38 seconds left in the second half. And I've never seen this in a broadcast before. Leave it to True TV to give you something we've never seen mm-hmm. before. They put a graphic up with like 17 minutes to go in the second half when Virginia was still stuck on 14 points. Yep. And it said. <laughs> Virginia has not scored since 9.48 p.m. Eastern. It was 10.40 Eastern. These dudes had not scored in 52 minutes. Dude. 52 minutes. You ain't scored a a point. Do you realize? Do you realize? If you have an erection for as long as as long as Virginia went without scoring last night, you have to consult the doctor or you should. No, you had to go to the hospital. That's what they say. That's what they say. That's what they say. I've seen the fine print. If you look at the fine print. Or not the, I mean, the, what they say on the commercial. I'm not reading the fine print. You hear the fine print. I'm not that old yet. You hear the fine print. Yeah, you hear the fine How print. How do you go 52 <laughs> minutes of real time without scoring a point in a basketball game? Like you're all on scholarship. What are we doing? Yeah. Virginia went four and five in its previous nine games heading into the NCAA tournament. They failed to score even 50 points in four of their previous eight games. As of yesterday, they were 69th in the at Ken Palm, 18 spots lower than the next lowest at large team at Ken Palm. They were such an outlier in every way. Only two quadrant one wins. So why is Virginia in this NCAA tournament? If you ask the committee chair, 
Why are they here? Feels like a legacy invite. Is it because they got all these big wins? Nope. They have two quadrant one wins. Is it because they've really been playing well lately? Nope. They're four and five in their past nine. Is it because, man, they're explosive offensively and a little bit like Alabama, you never know when they're just going to go put 104 on you and beat you. Nope. They can't even crack 50. Why are they here? The best thing you could say about Virginia is they didn't take horrific losses all season. They took some lopsided ones, but not quadrant three losses, quadrant four losses. They were clean in that part of their resume. And that's how they got in. But they should not have been in. And then they proved last night that they should not have been in. And now, how about this? On April 8, 2019, Virginia beat Texas Tech to win the national championship. Mm -hmm. And since then, Virginia has not won an NCAA tournament game. It will at least be March 2005 before Virginia next has an opportunity to even win an NCAA tournament game which means they will end up going roughly six years at least without winning an NCAA tournament game. Now, in fairness, 2020, we didn't have a tournament, so nobody won one that year. But in 2021, they lost to Ohio in the first round. 2022, they missed the tournament. 2023, lost to Furman in the first round. 2024, lose to Colorado State in the first four. Is the shine come off this a little bit, Tony Bennett, Virginia? I mean... I I just think that when you win a national championship at Virginia, you got it. I think you get a nice little cushion for a while. Like I wouldn't be super eager to move. I mean, you still made the NCAA tournament. Oh, I don't mean I don't mean like is Tony Bennett under pressure on the hot seat or anything. I got no, no, no. you. I got you. I just you. mean like you know, on April 8th, 2019, it was like yo, this might be the best basketball coach in the country, and he yeah, might be running right. the best basketball program in the country. They had been one seeds in back-to-back -back years. Then they win the tournament. Maybe this guy is the best thing going. Mm -hmm. And now he ain't won an NCAA tournament game since 2019. It's 2024. You know what it feels like to me? Mm -hmm. It feels like a situation where a guy, uh, like when a, when a big opportunity opens up, probably jumps while it's – while it's still, I've decent. always, I've yeah. always thought he would go to the NBA. I did, too. that's what and I, not yeah. with this style. He cannot coach this style right. in the NBA. But I mean, I've talked to Tony about it. He knows he can't coach the style in the NBA. Um, but he's a smart, talented guy. He would figure it out, I think. But I, I actually think they should make real adjustments in advance of next season. Like this is not, this is not working. Mm. I mean, it, at some point, it starts to impact recruiting too. Mm -hmm. Hey, you want to go to Virginia and, and and score 14 points in the first half? Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, go to yeah, you want to go be Virginia's leading scorer and score 12 points a game? You know, yeah, it's, it's at some point. Right. I do think, and other people have made this point, that the changing landscape of college basketball has negatively impacted Virginia. Uh, one of Tony's strengths, perhaps Tony's biggest strength, was like get people in your program and develop them in over years and it wasn't a lot of one and done stuff. It was like development of them, and then like you look up, and the sophomore's really good, and this junior's really good, and now the developmental phase of college basketball is not completely over, but largely over because of the transfer portal. And then, you know, you could outwork people, out relationship people in recruiting in years past. I'm not suggesting you wouldn't get undone by a under the table bid somewhere. But you could out relationship people like you could out relationship people in recruiting. Mm -hmm. And that's where Tony was really good. Yep. Well, now it's just a money game. Like, all right, you got 400,000 for me. This other school's got 600,000 for me. I guess I'm taking a 600,000. And Tony doesn't strike me as the type who is naturally comfortable navigating those seas. Um, he reminds me of a guy like Jay Wright. You ever talked to Jay Wright about it? Why did he get out? There were a bunch of different reasons. But one of the reasons Jay will tell you is I didn't want to be involved in all that. Mm -hmm. Negotiating deals and trying to see if I can come up with $800,000 from a business owner to get a point guard. It's just I didn't understand it. I didn't want to understand it. It just felt like it was time for me to get on with it. I Tony seems more cut from that cloth than not. So I can sort of see how the program is slipping a little bit. The world has changed and not in a way that I think benefits Virginia. Now people aren't chasing that Virginia education as much as they're chasing money. How much can I get to play basketball next season? Doesn't mean he can't get it back, 
But I do think the changing landscape is a negative. Mm -hmm. I will say this is interesting. Hadn't won a game in the NCAA tournament since 2019, but has won two ACC championships since 2019. So what does it say about the ACC? ACC coaches are always telling you they're getting a bad rap. They say, hey, we're better than people say. We're better than computers say. Are you? Because Virginia just went to the NCAA tournament and got smacked around again. Hasn't won an NCAA tournament game since 2019, but has won two ACC regular season championships since mm -hmm. 2019. What does it say about your league when you're, you got a team that can win multiple ACC regular season titles but can't win an NCAA tournament game? That sounds like a mid-major league, low-major league, yeah. rather than the ACC. And oh, by the way, Virginia finished third, alone in third in the ACC standings this year, behind only Duke and Carolina. Colorado State finished tied for sixth in the Mountain West. That means the school that finished tied for sixth in the Mountain West, take it for what it's worth. Maybe nothing, but it's true. It's a true thing. Maybe it doesn't mean anything, but it's a true thing. Team that just finished uh, sixth, tied for sixth in the Mountain West Conference, just beat the team that finished alone in third in the ACC by 25 points on a neutral court on True TV. Number two. First four continues tonight. It's another Mountain West Conference. Yep. It's Boise State. The Broncos. Do you know what kind of history the Broncos are trying to make tonight? They're playing Colorado. What kind of history is Boise State trying to make tonight? I'm going to say that they are trying to become the first Mountain West team to ever win a first four game and get into the NCAA tournament, the full field. I mean, maybe, but I don't know. That just sounded good. Boise State has never won an NCAA tournament game. Really? They're 0-9. I Memphis has beaten them yes. recently. We're a part of this. Yeah, yeah. We're a part of this. Yep. Boise State has been to the NCAA tournament nine times and never won an NCAA tournament game. So I did a podcast yesterday with BJ Rains, who covers Boise State. He asked me this question. Let me ask you. Boise State's never won an NCAA tournament game. If Boise State wins tonight, I know technically it's an NCAA tournament win. It just mm -hmm. is. There's no getting around mm -hmm. that. Should it count? Is it an asterisk? Is it a real tournament win? Yeah, I think so. I do too. Uh, I don't like. I don't like how they do the first four. It still doesn't take away from the fact that they're saying it's the NCAA tournament, right? Like I, I think it's a disservice how they do it to these teams. But at the end of the day, you're part of the NCAA tournament. You're in it according to how this stuff works. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a first four win, but it's yeah. an NCAA tournament win. I've actually yep. had some coaches of sixteen seeds because I made the point on the podcast once. I don't like that 16s get shipped to Dayton in the first four because mm -hmm. you miss out on the actual true NCAA tournament experience. Like a 16 traditionally, we're going to play Duke as a one-seater, UConn as a yeah. one-seater, Kentucky as a one-seater, whatever. And yeah, you're probably going to get your brains beat in, but you still get to have that moment yeah. where you're sitting around in 30 years and you're like, yeah, I, yeah. I you know, oh, did I ever tell you? Oh, did you ever hear about – Grandpa ever tell you about when he played against John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins mm -hmm. at Kentucky? Oh, Grandpa, you played against John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins. What was that like? Like you always had that. Yep. And when you are a 16 seed now, you know, if you're grambling, it's just like you're tonight you're playing Montana State. Ain't nobody, right. ain't nobody ever going to want their right. grandpa to tell them about the time they played That's against true. Montana State. So you, you get robbed of that lifelong memory of playing against one of the biggest brands, best teams, sometimes best players in the country. Yep. But what coaches of other 16 seeds told me, you know what they said? GP, I hear you, but I like it because I can go win a game. If I got to go play Duke, I'm not winning that. Mm -hmm. But, like, all I got to do if I'm Montana State is beat Grambling to get an NCAA tournament win. And if I'm Grambling, all I got to do is beat Montana, Montana State. That's much easier than That's having to go beat point. UConn or Purdue or Houston. So they kind of like it. I don't know. You also get a little more because this is what everybody's watching tonight. Whereas you get a little more pop. Yeah, Thursday, Friday, the first round, like every everybody's just bouncing around. From yeah, game like to game, like so. like you know, and that's good. That's good if you're Colorado State. It's not good if you're Virginia. Right. Because like last night, everybody's just making your. You'd be Virginia would have been better not better off from like a branding thing. Yep. To just not have made the NCAA tournament than to get embarrassed on that stage last night. Yep. So um, it's a big stage. I guess on some level a lesser game, but it's still an NCAA tournament game. So good luck to the Broncos. Hopefully tonight they'll get their first NCAA tournament victory in school history. Number three. Beyonce has announced that her next album is coming out soon. Yep. Next week. And do you know what it'll be called? 
What's it called? Cowboy Carter. Oh, I like that. Did I invent this? Loki? Did you? I mean, I spent years calling my ex-producer Cowboy Carson. Oh. He decided he wanted to be on a it's – it's very Beyonce-like. He did not operate in the country world. Decided he wanted to go run the wolf. Woo! Yep. And then I started calling him Cowboy Carson. Yep. And now Beyonce, she Think decides she, she, wants to, she wants to dabble in country, in the genre. Now she's calling her album Cowboy Carter because she, of course, is the wife of Sean Carter. That's right. I, she's, she's Cowboy Carter. Maybe she, may, maybe you're onto something. Maybe I, she got this from you. Maybe she – should I sue? I would not sue Beyonce. No, I wouldn't sue, I wouldn't but either. I might just like try to reach out and say, hey, like maybe she could just say – Shout out GP. Yeah, like, shout out GP. Well, yeah, when she's like when she's doing her next concert, That's and right. she says, "Hey, my new album's about to come out." Uh, inspired. Cowboy Carter, I just, inspired by the Gary Parish show. Shout out GP in yeah. Memphis. Thank you. Like it's just so we could have the clip. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, That'd be nice. It'd be cool. Beyonce. So Beyonce announced this yesterday. Cowboy Carter next album yeah, yeah, coming yeah, out yeah, next yeah. week, right? It's it's basically a, a a continuation of Renaissance. It's Act Two, as she explores these different genres of music, and then she went on to explain. Did you see the explanation? No. Oh, these country girls did this to themselves. What happened? These country girls did this to themselves. What'd they do? You remember back in 2016, Beyonce? She went to the CMAs. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. She performed with the Chicks, formerly the Dixie Chicks. I do remember that. Yeah. Okay. Daddy Lessons, Off Lemonade. Mm-hmm. Had a country hint to it. I think I told you when we first found out Beyonce was doing what sounded like it might be a country album. I said, you know, there is a track on the Lemonade. Sounds like a country song. Okay. That's the song I was referencing. She got invited to perform it at the 2016 CMAs, Country Music Awards, with the Chicks, formerly known as the Dixie Chicks. Now, you might remember the Dixie Chicks were anti-George Bush. Yes. So then they got very controversial. blackballed, blacklisted yep. in the country music world. But then we're going through a whole Black Lives Matter thing and... The chicks are going to team with Beyonce, and we're going to have this magical moment at the CMAs. All right? We're bringing – hey, we're trying to – we've had a reckoning in this country. Bridge the gap. We're trying to bring people back together. Let's bring the chicks back in. Let the past be the past. And they dropped Dixie because that was – can't have that. Right. I guess. I guess. I guess. And then, hey, let's bring Beyonce up. Let's bring the world together. Beyonce showed up, looked great, sounded great, played with the chicks. Do you realize it was the most 15, it was the most watched 15 minute interval in the history of the CMAs? Okay. You can bring Garth Brooks, Reba McIntyre, whatever you want to do. Ain't nobody ever done 15 more watch minutes at the CMAs than Beyonce. Okay. Makes sense. You know what happened next? What? Racism. Oh, no. Oh, lots of racism. From who? White people. Look just like you, just like me. Okay. Started bombarding the CMA social media accounts. Oh. Oh. Racial slurs. Mm-hmm. Racial slurs. Do you know the CMAs? Think about this. It's the most watched 15-minute interval in the history of your show, and they took it down. They deleted their posts. From their channels? Or- they deleted Beyonce. From their channels. This woman just delivered the most watched 15 minutes you've ever had in the history of your show. And you deleted her from all your social mm-hmm. media channels. You tried to pretend it didn't happen. You can't let the trolls win. You can't let the trolls win. You can't let the trolls win. So Beyonce, as she announces this, you know what she says last night? Mm. This album has been over five years in the making. And it was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcomed. And it was very clear that I wasn't. Oh, you did this to yourself. Mic drop. You dumb, dumb country women. <laughs> she was going to leave you, you know alone. the women? Because it was. How do you know it was the women? I mean, it was the men too. <laughs> oh, man. She was going to leave y'all alone. Uh-huh. She was just going to keep being Beyonce yep. over here in this lane, selling out stadiums, 
creating the best videos of all time, mm -hmm. doing the best Coachella performances of all time, best Super Bowl performances of all time. She was going to let y'all have y'all little thing. Yeah. Y'all can have y'all little Miranda Lamberts mm -hmm. and your little Casey Musgraves and your little who else? Give me some names. Kelsey Ballerini. Yeah, Kelsey. Yeah, she going to leave y'all alone. Then what happened? Y'all tried to make her feel like she didn't belong there. Mm -hmm. Y'all told her you don't belong here. They did not. Yes, they did. No, they're good people. I mean, those women probably are. Yes, those specific artists we named. I think. I don't know. Hell the hell do I know? But people who support those women and other women like them, they came from Beyonce's throat. They said, you don't belong here. And you know what she says now? Oh, watch. Mm -hmm. I don't belong here. What if I just take the whole thing over, put on a cowboy hat? I'm Cowboy Carter. I kind of want to see her do this with every genre. She's going to. Yeah. Like, let's get the heavy metal album next. I can't wait. I can't wait either. Beyonce said she went back and explored the roots of country music. Mm -hmm. You know what she found out? She is the roots of country music. She didn't say that. I said that part. Oh, that'd be good to add in, like, the album, like, the little album artwork. Well, she is from the country. Uh -huh. She is a country woman. Oh, yeah. Like, if you watch Beyonce. Oh, we want to do a deep dive now. <laughs> you watch Beyonce dance and sing, it doesn't flash country at you. Mm -hmm. You ever listen to Beyonce just talk? You ever just seen, like, a conversation with yep. Beyonce? She's country. She is country. They tried to tell her she didn't belong. They, they made her feel unwelcomed. And now, look. Now she's number one on the charts. You know what Beyonce said yesterday? She said, I take great pride in being the first black woman to ever top the country charts. Flex. That's a flex. But I look forward to the day when the color of someone's skin has no impact whatsoever on what genre of music they perform. Flex also said, don't get it twisted. This ain't a country album. She said it ain't a country album, Bennett. You know what she said? Hmm. This ain't no country album. It's a Beyonce album. Mic drop! You dumb, dumb white people. You did this to yourself. <laughs> no, they did you not. You did this to yourself. She was going to leave y'all alone. Y'all had it. Y'all had it. Y'all had it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you, all you had to do was, all you had to do was say, man, that Beyonce sure was great. And she'd have went back to, left y'all alone. You made her feel like she wasn't welcome. I, and now she's going to run the whole thing. I think she is. Here's the thing. You made somebody more talented than you, more motivated than you. You made them feel like they weren't welcome. So now they got, now you'll be opening for Beyonce someday on her country tour. I hope you're excited. I, now Beyonce. She goes When's to, the album drop, by the way? Next week. Yeah. So she, we just still have the two singles, right? Yes. We don't have anything else yet. No. Okay, good. Oh, it's coming, no, though. Those two singles hit, too. It's coming, Bennett. Them. Oh, it's coming. I like that 16 carriages. <laughs> I like that one the best. I, I like them all. Texas like Hold'em's fun, like the fun one, but that's 16 carriages. That's that, man. That one will punch you in the chest. You guys didn't know how good you, you had it. Oh, yep. You had it all to yourself. You effed up. You messed up this time, buddy. Yep. Next time. And I tell you what, if Beyonce shows up at like the... Heavy metal awards this year, and I don't even know that they exist. I, they don't. Okay. <laughs> they do not. Okay. But yeah, if they do. The genre has fallen. If Jeez, Beyonce. got to bring it back. If Beyonce shows up at the heavy metal awards, I'm just telling all you metal heads, is that what we call them? Sure. I'm telling you. Be welcoming. Uh -huh. Say she's great. Make her feel like she's a part of it. Because if you, if you don't. She'll come for you too, dude. I am so ready for like the. You'll look up and Shine Down will be opening for Beyonce. I can't wait for the. New you want Shine Down to be opening for Beyonce because that's where we're headed. I can't wait for the new Beyonce single featuring Morbid Angel. That's gonna be. That's gonna hit different. <laughs> that is gonna hit different. Oh, speaking of, she also said in her announcement last night, she looks forward. She has collaborated on this album with some people. She has immense respect for. Speculation is that guess who's gonna. Collaborate on the new Beyonce Cowboy Carter album. Taylor? Woo! Taylor Swift. Taylor getting back in the country. Oh, but you had it good. Mm -hmm. You got Taylor Swift out of you. She turned it over to y'all. She t Taylor was like, here, y'all can have you this. You can have it. Okay, listen. I've done all I can do here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it to you guys. Just 
don't be racist, okay? Hey, guys, I could be the king. I could be the queen of country and maybe the king of country forever if I wanted to. All right? That's what Taylor Swift told mm -hmm. these people. I can be the queen of country forever if I want to. But I feel like I've done everything I can do here. So I'm going to leave it to you guys. And now you guys can fight over it, have it, do, with it, do whatever you want. Just don't be racist and everything will be fine. Just like that. They, they started being racist with Beyonce, and now Beyonce's coming to take it over, and she's pulling Taylor back in with her. Mm. They messed this up. I think you're right. They messed this up. It's All over. Right. It's, it might be over. It might be. It might be it over. Might be. God bless Beyonce. Yeah. She's the best. Number four. Bryce Harris. Back to college basketball. College basketball player. Plays for Howard. Did you see him last night? No. Clip went viral. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I saw this clip. It's a great answer to a press conference question. And you ready for this? I don't even know what the question was. I don't even care. I just think this is a great answer to any question. Let's listen to what Bryce Harris had to say. Just to reiterate, um, it, comes down, it, yeah, it comes down to basketball, but also comes down to having connections with who we are, as long as teammates, but human beings, um, you know, Playing on a basketball team is one of the more beautiful things in life because it gives you a group of brothers who have a common goal and it allows you to have a deeper connection past just being a teammate, you know? So what we speak a lot about is having brothers, you know? You wanna have brothers. You're gonna go through things with your brothers. You're gonna have good moments. You're gonna have bad moments. You're gonna have moments where you're mad at your brother, your brother's mad at you, but you guys have to go through the Rocky Mountain and get over it. So, um, especially to reach to reach that common goal. So, I mean, you know, in a nutshell, that's basically what that was. Um, you know, just understanding each other. You know, understanding our whys. You know, why we play the game. Um, you know, who introduced us to the game. What's carrying us through any type of adversity that we have, whether it's basketball-wise or in life in general, and just carry on and be able to lean on one another. I don't want to get hokey, um, but I do think there's stuff in there that mm. you can apply to any life. And I really do think that this is a purpose sports can serve. Like, not all of our kids, all of us, or even most of us, or most of our kids, are going to end up playing anything at the collegiate level. Right. Most of us will never be as accomplished at whatever we try to do as that young man Bryce Harris is. Like he's playing Division I basketball in the NCAA tournament. Most of us will never be athletically gifted enough to do something like that. All right? But we all probably did play something, and our kids probably did play something. And I can even see it with my youngest son. Like, I don't know where he's going with baseball, but I know that right now he feels like he's a part of something, and he cares about it. And he wants to work at it. And he's happy for his teammates when they do well. And um, he's disappointed when he doesn't do well. But then he, I watch his teammates and his coaches pick him back up. And I really do think there's something substantial in all of that. I think so often people think you play soccer so that maybe you can be messy. Or you play baseball so that maybe you can be Aaron Judge. Or you play basketball so that you can be LeBron James. And what I found to be true is that 99.999% of any of us that play anything ain't ever going to be anything. But along the way, you can pick up some real important stuff and uh, create some real important habits and have some real bonds with other humans. And I, I just think that's immensely important to hear that young man be able, after a disappointing game last night, sort of settle on that and talk about the the main thing we'll get from all of this, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but isn't playing in the NCAA tournament or playing on national television, but like, you know, I get to live every day with these people. And, you know, there's good days and there's bad days. But when you're part of a team, and team could also represent family. Again, if you're trying to apply this to any, any life, you know, when you're part of a team, you're going to have some good days and some bad days and some good moments and some bad moments. And, some good relationships and some bad relationships, but you got to work through them, right? Yep. You got to figure out how to navigate them, get past them. It's an incredible thing to know at that age.
I don't think most young people understand that as well as that young man seems to understand that. So I just thought that was a, a really impressive moment. Like we're watching a lot of talented young people, both men and women, compete in the NCAA tournament over the next few weeks, and you'll see them pop up on the screen, making a big shot, big steal, nice dunk, one shining moment, all that. I love these press conference moments as much as anything because you get a glimpse into – it's very easy for – older generations to look at young people and feel like, oh, the world's going to hell. Every generation in the history of generations has always thought the next generation is taking the world to hell. And eventually we'll get there. Yeah. Well, eventually we will. And it might actually be our generation that takes the world to hell. Probably. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know if you saw Oppenheimer. I did. <sighs> That's tough. Yep. When I watch young people talk like Bryce Harris, that makes me feel good about the next generation. I feel like, man, that's a young person that's got it together way more than I had it together um, at a young age. Just very mature thoughts from an incredibly young man. And when I, when I see mature thoughts from a young person, I'm always impressed by that. I like him. Number five. Rest in peace, Penny's Nitty Gritty. It's over. It's closed. It's closed. Did you ever go? I did. How was it? It was great. Great? It was really good, actually. Well, then uh, what? What? <laughs> I guess you didn't go enough. I don't know. There wasn't a ton of people when we went. Sounds uh, like, yeah, I would have yeah. guessed, guessed that based on this. But the food was great. I think... That's not what they said. Oh, the, who, the, who who said it wasn't good? Source told Daily Memphian that uh, they had a food quality problem. Hmm. My food was good. I, I, I went once just because, like, you know, get out of here and I got to go get something. I'm hungry. You know, sometimes I'm hungry, Bennett. Mm -hmm. And uh, just right there. Yeah, it's right just there right at the there. West. Right. Yeah. I'm so yeah. confused in this space. Yeah. I never know what I'm pointing at. Right. I'm always pointing. Right I'm always pointing like I know exactly what I'm pointing at. No idea what I'm pointing at. But it's right there. Penny, formerly known as Penny's Nitty Gritty. Mm -hmm. It's not there anymore. No. Poor guy. Yeah. They're trying to take everything from him. <laughs> it seems like. You it. got some people out there on the internet trying to take Penny's job. Now they didn't took his restaurant. What? What's next? I think maybe. What is next? What, I, what I else? Do, what else do you people want to take from Penny Hardaway? I don't know. No, I can't. I honestly, one cent logo's next. They're gonna grab that no, one cent not. logo. Ain't next. nobody touching that logo. We'll see. Um, no, I don't know why it didn't do well. That was a. I, I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. We went over there and got some catfish and some greens and some mac and cheese. It was good. I I, I think I remember my meal being fine. I enjoyed like, it. Like I don't. I didn't walk out of there going, "I'll never go to Penny's Nitty Gritty again." You know what the truth is? Mm. I think it's just hard. I think it's hard to do a restaurant. Especially a restaurant in a hotel. Yeah, I think it's hard to do a restaurant. Like, here's the thing about restaurants and hotels. Oh, buddy, if you're a traveler, there ain't nothing better than a nice restaurant in a nice hotel. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a St. Louis Marriott. I, I, like, I always remember this. There's a St. Louis Marriott, and in that Marriott, there's a Roos Chris. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful because you could just, like, check into your room, and then, like, I'm going to go get an amazing steak. Yeah. You know? It like it's not like oh yeah you want some chicken tenders it's like I know Roost Chris is a chain but like that, that, that that's a good piece of meat yep Roost Chris is good good piece of meat they put that butter on the plate oh buddy Roost yep. Chris is good so like that so there's nothing better for a traveler than to have a great restaurant in in a hotel let me ask you this Bennett hmm. how often do Memphians go to hotels to go to dinner it's a good point um, I don't know I I don't. People don't. Yeah, I don't. I, I think people don't. In yeah. New York, some of the best restaurants are in hotels. Like Jean George is in a hotel. It's one of the best restaurants in the world. But I gather in most other cities, and particularly cities of this size, I don't know if I don't know if restaurants and hotels. I don't know if that's what I'd want to start. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't work here. Maybe it doesn't work here. I can't, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, like when was the last time I went to a hotel? And I mean, the Peabody's got... I mean, it was there. I mean, the, the Peabody's yeah. got a place, and I've, you know, I'm, I've been there. I go there, like, every third Valentine's Day or something. Yeah. You know, whatever. I think it's just hard. I think it's hard. Restaurants are hard. Restaurants hey, are hard. Hey, Cal Steakhouse didn't make it. See what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? Remember Cal Steakhouse? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, they just had to close Mike Miller's place. Oh, yeah, they did. You're right. I think restaurants are just hard. There's a place right by my wife's store, and it's been something different every year for like every year. You know, it's like a pizza place for a year, and then it's a steakhouse for a year, and then mm -hmm. it's something else for a year, and I think it'll be something else next year. Yeah. They just keep putting things in there, and it just doesn't work. And everything else in that 
around her works well. And that thing just doesn't work. I think restaurants are just hard. Yeah. Rest in peace, Penny's Nitty Gritty. Rest in peace. It's kind of a goof- I enjoyed my I enjoyed my experience. I did too. Kind of a goofy name though. Can we admit that? Well, because it was kind of like fine dining southern cuisine. I mean, Penny's Nitty Gritty. Probably should have just called it like Penny's Place or something. Uh, something. Yeah. Or or Chick Fil A. <laughs> I think there's a trademark. I know, but you should try yeah. it. You could probably trick people for at least a month just yeah. by calling it Chick-fil-A. You'd have a line for a month. Yeah. That's what I would do. I would I would take over that space in the Westin, uh-huh. call, call it Chick-fil-A, and see what happens. You'd trick people for about a month. How could you do it? You just call it Chick-fil-A. Or like, you could call it like Chick-fil-O or something. Yeah, you just Chick-fil-A yeah. and just hope people <laughs> yeah. get tricked. Just it, put an O instead yeah. of the A. Like a fake, like a fake Adam uh-huh. Schefter? Yeah. Just a little bit That's like a fake it. Adam Schefter, like a yep. fake Woj. Yep. You just put a fake Chick-fil-A in there and people will be like, hey, what are we going to get for lunch? And it's like, yo, they got a Chick-fil-A in the Westin. And so you'll be like, okay, let's go there. And then you'll get there and you'll realize, oh, man, this ain't Chick-fil-A. Right. But then you'll go, but they still got chick- chicken sandwiches, so let's just get a chicken sandwich. I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. I don't think it's the worst idea. You trick people into thinking you got a Chick-fil-A. Then they'll get there, and you're not Chick-fil-A, but it's like, uh, yeah, we're not Chick-fil-A, but we still got we can still got some chicken if you want it. All mm-hmm. right, sure, I'll buy that. Mm-hmm. I think that works. Mm-hmm. I agree. Hey, couldn't go worse, could it? Uh, no, I couldn't. Be back with GP's carry out. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Bally Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Bally Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Bally Sports and streaming on the Bally Sports app. Bally Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Presented by Ortho South. We're in the Bill Ford Tough Studio. Let's wrap this thing up. GP's carry out. 
It's time for GP's Carryout. One final segment filled with stuff to take with you. It's not everything you need to know, but it's most of it. What did we learn today? A whole bunch of stuff, but I think the most important thing, Bennett, the racist and motivated Beyonce to take over the country music genre. Yep. I always suspected, I always suspected they had something to do with it, but I wasn't going to believe it 100% till I heard it straight from the queen's mouth. She made it clear yesterday, this album, Cowboy Carter, mm -hmm. which I might have indirectly inspired. Likely. Likely indirectly inspired. I don't want to take credit for it. But did I likely and directly inspire it? You said so. I think so. Bennett thinks so. Beyonce told us yesterday, you know what she said? This album. This album comes from a feeling from years ago when I felt unwelcomed. And most people are attaching that to her performance at the 2016 CMAs where she performed with the Chicks, formerly known as the Dixie Chicks. Killed it. Most watched 15 minutes in the history of the CMAs. And yet the CMAs deleted Beyonce from their social media accounts because of the racist backlash online. There was racist backlash online. And this is even before Elon Musk took over Twitter. Mm -hmm. It broke Beyonce's heart. She's a country girl at her core. And she said, if you don't want me here, if I'm not welcomed here, and even the chicks backed her up on it. You know what the chicks said? We were backstage and the whole thing was weird. We were treated weirdly. It broke Beyonce's heart. Beyonce tried to greet these people with her greatness. I'll bless you with my presence. My presence is a present. And they made her feel unwelcomed. So Beyonce walks away from that with a broken heart. And she says, oh, I got things to do. Oh, I got things to do. But eventually I'm coming back here and I'm gonna take this whole bitch over. Eventually I'm gonna put a cowboy hat on and I'm gonna take this whole bitch over. Because of the way you made me feel on this night. I provided you with the best 15 minutes you've ever had, the most watched 15 minutes you've ever had, and you wanna delete me? Delete me? I'll be back here someday. I'm going to put a cowboy hat on. And I'm going to take this whole bitch over. Now here we are. Mm -hmm. Next week, Cowboy Carter. Straight to number one. And all these people had to do was appreciate Beyonce. Tell her thank you for showing up and gracing our stage with your brilliance and everything would have been fine. But you made her feel unwelcome. You hurt her. And now she's going to take over your entire genre and make all the rest of you second class citizens. Mic drop for the queen. And there's a lesson out there for the hard rock genre, for the heavy metal genre. Is there any other genre, singer-songwriter genre? Yeah. Hey, Ed Sheeran, you better respect Beyonce. Hey, Connor Oberst, mm -hmm. you better respect Beyonce. Don't let Beyonce collaborate with Megadeth and take over heavy metal. That'd be awesome. Is Megadeth still a thing? Yeah, but I'd I think she'd probably want to go for something a little more. Maybe start with like Metallica. I think that's a. You can just come from Metallica just like that. Or or they can guest be, do a guest appearance on one of her singles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying what what Beyonce has proven over and over again is that she can do anything. Mm -hmm. She can do anything better than you. All right. And she was willing to let you have your little thing, your little country music thing. But but then she just tried to like bless you with her presence and you treated her poorly so now she's going to take over the whole thing heavy metal don't make the same mistake hard rock don't make the same mistake singer songwriter genre don't make the same mistake if beyonce wants to dabble in your stuff 
you you make her feel appreciative and appreciated and welcome or else you'll just make a whole album and take over the whole thing that's where we're headed yep that's where we're headed bennett you did this to yourself be less racist la- next time and um you know then beyonce won't have to come take over everything you did this to yourself what's today's biggest game grizzlies warriors it's out in san francisco mike wallace is there we talked to him oh. got a beautiful hotel room i forgot we had a game tonight oh bennett it's a late one nine o'clock tip it's on espn damn I was, I was over here studying Colorado and Boise State. Oh, buddy. Okay. Uh, Grizz Warriors, let's go. Golden State's a 10.5 point favorite. The total's 219.5. Bennett, we don't have much wriggle, wiggle room left if it comes to spin it, uh, finishing at least 500 on the road. We can only lose one more game on the road. Tonight is a game on the road. So if we don't win this one tonight, we got to go undefeated the rest of the way on the road. Right. To finish above 500 on the road. It ain't looking good, Bennett. Ain't nothing look good for a while, if we're being honest. Ain't nothing look good for a while. Hey, you want to know your record? Yes. I gave you a win last night. Um, You are now 99, 103, and 4. You're down negative. Uh, you're down 15.3 units. It's not great. No. It's terrible. But it's better than where you were yesterday, and that's all we can, that's all we can do. It's one step at a time. One day at a time, Bennett. One day at a time. Uh, time. Okay, hang on. What are my old friends Grizzlies PR talking about today? That's that's going to be important in my decision making here. Do we have Jaron? Do we have Dez? Let's see. Okay. Uh, ooh, Santi Aldama questionable. Uh, Vince is still uh, likely going to be out. He's doubtful. Um, it looks like we do have Jaron and Dez. Ten and a half. Ten and a half. That's the number. I, I didn't put it on there. Don't look at me like that. I didn't do the number. The Warriors ain't. Uh, give me the Grizz. That give me the, the Grizz. The give Road the Warrior Grizz. Grizz. I don't know. I don't know about a straight up win, but ten and a half. Bennett said, "Take the Road Warrior Grizz." Yeah, yeah. Plus ten and a half. Hey, if you yeah. win, to, if you win tonight, this is this is win number one hundred for you. We need it. I mean, I could bring you like a plaque or something. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. Let's fight tonight. Let's fight tonight. Let's fight tonight. Nine o'clock tip. Bennett says ten and a half plus ten and a half with the Grizz. What are we watching on TV? All right, Bennett, I want you to help me here. Okay. I am so behind on TV. You're a little behind? I mean, a lot behind. Mm-hmm. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. It, man, if you knew how behind I was on this stuff, mm. it's embarrassing. Yep. But I, I'm in a unique situation today. Okay. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Mm. I do not have a top 25 and one to do in the morning. I don't have a column to write tonight. I don't have a show to prepare for tomorrow. I don't have anything to do. Now, I mean, sure, there's something I could do. But like for all intents and purposes, relative to my normal day to day, once I get on this plane today, I don't have anything to do. I'm going to turn up. If you don't mind, I'm going to turn up. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even going to think about anything work. I'm going to put a dent into my TV watch. And now it's a little bit like you're game picking. I'm way behind and I can't make up. It's one day at a time. But I'm going to accomplish some stuff on this flight today. Good. I'm going to watch. I'm going to consume some stuff. What should I watch? Ooh. Are you caught up on Curb? Yes. It's the only That's an easy one to digest. Yeah, it's just so funny. I can't not watch it. Yep. And the latest episode was outrageous. It's the it's, it is it is the only thing I'm caught up on. The only thing in the world I'm caught up on is Curb. I think it's got to be Shogun. Okay, I got a problem. What's up? Maybe somebody can help me. This might be helpful. And then we'll get out of here cuz I'm tired. I'm I'm ready to go too. Um Shogun. People bring up Shogun. Mm-hmm. It's on Hulu. It's on FX. Yeah, but, but then you can also watch it on Hulu. Yeah, I have Hulu, but I have it as part of like a bundle. Mm-hmm. I've got like a Hulu, Disney Plus, ESPN yeah, bundle. I have that. Okay. Yep. Hulu, you can only like on Netflix. You can download to your phone. Right. Apple TV, you can download to your phone. I think Amazon Prime, you can download to your phone. Hulu, you can only download to your phone with like a special Hulu subscription. But it ain't my bundle subscription. So I'm I tried. Hang to, on, I'm about to try it. You can't, Bennett. I have the same subscription. You can't, Bennett. Let's see if I can download something real quick. If you do, I'm gonna hug you because I think I, this is a you issue. Might be. 
I don't think it is. I don't think it is. You have to have a... Sp- you can't do it. See, I'm telling you. So this is the problem. You get up in the air and you can't watch Shogun because you can't download Hulu. So here's the deal. I tried... I told you. You doubted me. That's lame. You doubted me. You should move in with me. That's lame, you should, bro. You should move into my house. <laughs> you should move in my house. If you're so quickly going to just dismiss something I'm saying to you, even though it's 100% true, you sound like somebody who should live with me because that's what everybody who lives with me does. Dude. I say, hey, hey, just so you know, this thing's going to happen. And they go, ah, it'll be fine. Never fine. What did I tell you? You yeah. doubted me? And now look. Now look. I shouldn't have to pay the premium for okay. the downloads. Here's the second problem. Yep. I agree. You shouldn't have to pay the premium. And I don't think I should either, just to download. Uh-uh. You ready for this? I was willing to. What does it cost? An extra five probably, bucks? Probably something like that. What do I care? I mean, yeah, I'm not I know I'm not burning money, but like I wanted to watch Shogun on my flight. Yeah. If it costs ten bucks, I'll do it. Okay. Couldn't even don't know how to do it. It, I couldn't even find an option where it was like, would you like to upgrade the subscription so you can download stuff? That's what It should say that to me somewhere. GP, would you like to upgrade so you can download? And I would hit yes. And I can't find that anywhere. So I'm just constantly looking for Shogun, but I can't get it. This is why Hulu's down here. And the, when you're doing the streaming rankings, Hulu's like down here. I got, It's like, you know, I, I, in whatever order, like Netflix, yeah. Prime, yes. HBO Max, Disney Plus, yeah. all... Who Apple who is down here? Yeah. That's lame. I think so too. I gotta be able to download the episodes of the show I'm watching. What do I even have the service for? I mean, I'm 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 in a, on an airplane and I, I if I had them downloaded, I could watch them. So now I will pr- I want to watch Shogun. If there's one thing yeah. I would like to do today, it would be watch Shogun on this plane. But I can't download it. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to watch something else. Okay, man. so Jess has been talking about and I want to watch it, this new Nickelodeon documentary that or it's the dark side of er- oh i saw buddy on tmz talking about i didn't yeah. groom children yeah, but, yeah. but did he did he groom children so so they're watching the documentary right now i want to watch it because it's about like my era kind of it's actually a little bit past but it starts in my era of nickelodeon they said that heavy fe- they, they said that heavy set fellow big was grooming children was he that's what they say that's was what he? they do you say. think he was i gotta watch the documentary to confirm but mm-hmm. A lot of people are saying it. Why are they saying that so much? A lot so of people much? are saying it. Man, why are people out there grooming children? Why don't you just leave children alone? Yeah, that, that's, Christ. that's a good idea. Yeah. Just leave them alone. And it, it's... Fe- just leave the kids alone. How about that? Yeah. Is that, is, that, is that something we should be able to agree on? Simple enough. Just simple. Leave the kids alone. Christ. Okay, I'll watch, I'll watch something, Bennett. The okay. main point was... Yeah, I'm about, the main point was... I got I, nothing else. The main point was I'm about to turn up. I'm about to turn up. So... Don't even try to talk to me on a flight because I'm going to be incoherent. I'm going to be watching something. I'm going to be incoherent and watching something. That's my goal for today. Let's go. Yeah. What's the best thing we've read? Hey, over at CBSSports.com, David Cobb, our buddy David Cobb, Mm -hmm. fellow Memphians. Yeah. He has ranked every NCAA tournament first round game 1 to 32. Do you know what his favorite first round game is? Ooh, I'm going to say his favorite first round game is, is it New Mexico Clemson? No. You mean tell you where that one is? Tell you where that one is. That's number 17. Damn, Cobb. Yeah. I'm excited about that one. Uh, I'm going to say it's not Kansas Samford. Kansas Samford is oh, actually number oh, two. Oh, 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 Gonzaga McNeese State. That's it. Yeah. Number one. Yep. Yeah. That's the one. Gonzaga McNeese, McNeese State, 5 versus 12. Mark Few against Will Wade, 725 tomorrow night, Eastern, 625 Central on TBS. You want to read David Codd's piece? Find it at cbssports.com. What's on tap for tomorrow? Well, I mentioned, oh, tomorrow's going to be a different kind of day. We're doing mega shows tomorrow. It's a mega show. It's a mega show. It's a mega show. So that means, tell people what that means because I don't know. Yeah, so... Um, we have NCAA tournament uh, starting around 11 a.m. I believe. Uh, we've got games going on over in this building, um, which will be Friday, I think, actually. But anyways, we're doing a mega show leading up to the start of the NCAA tournament. So Jess, me, Roser, CJ, Vernon, everybody's going to be part of a GP. You're going to join us via Skype. Uh, it's going to be a mega show. All of your favorite GCM personalities getting ready for the start of the NCAA tournament. It starts tomorrow at 8 a.m. Oh, it's going to be great, isn't it? Yep. So uh, Jessica Benson will be here at 8 a.m. And then I'll join her at some point. 
Live from New York, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And then uh, Vernon will pop on, and uh, and that'll be the way we're going to do it. Can't wait. I can't wait. I think it's going to get wild in the early in the early uh, portion tomorrow morning. I'll, I'll be in here. I don't know. Just tune in at 8 a.m. GCM uh, and, and uh, stay tuned. And stay tuned. It's going to get wild. Oh, buddy. Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to miss that, Bennett. But I'll enjoy it from a distance. Well, we'll have you at some point. Yeah, I'll yeah. enjoy it from a distance. I'll call you. All right. I'll be, hey, I'll be ready. Yeah, good. I'll be ready. I'll be Skyped up and ready to go. Good. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. I'll enjoy mine. Meet back here uh, tomorrow at 8. Till then, be careful, be kind, be good. Rep your hood.